By the time I'm making this video, I'm pretty sure that you've already tried frame generation at least once. And the opinions are usually divided in between it sucks, huge input latency, and this is very usable mostly for single player games. What I can tell you though is that most of you aren't using frame generation the right way, or to be precise, the efficient way. Let me explain. There are three major points where frame generation can improve your experience, but somehow people don't talk much about them. The first one is GPU power draw and temperatures, the second one is GPU noise levels, and the third one, of course, the smoothness. But first of all, you need to understand that frame generation isn't meant to be used with lower base FPS. It is meant to be used with at least 60 FPS depending on the resolution, as the higher your base FPS are, the lower the final input latency will be, and the less visual artifacts you'll have, as there will be a bigger number of real frames, making you not notice as much the possible visual artifacts that, uh, well, that, te that, that technology has, let's say that. And latency is the same reason why it isn't aimed at competitive games where fast response is the key. You can use frame generation in those scenarios of course, the same way you can use it with 30 base FPS, but the overall quality won't be that great. But well, I guess nothing's better than to really show you what's going on. This is a rendered video that I had before testing the um, frame generation off versus frame generation on. In this case, we're running 1440p maximum, native quality, of course, and we have FSR FG on versus FSR FG off. In this case, we have we start with um, VSync frame limit off versus VSync on. And if you want to help the channel, lay an eye on today's sponsor. GVG more. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. In this case, as you can see, we are hovering around 120 FPS, and this is without any kind of frame generation. Once again, we're running 1440p native quality, which means that we're running TAA. And as you can see, in terms of power draw, we're having 295 watts on the GPU, 67 degrees, 68 degrees uh, as well, and we're hovering around 120 FPS. As for the CPU, it is 69 degrees, 83.3 watts. Now, as soon as we move to frame generation enabled, we have exactly the same settings, but we have frame generation enabled with VSync on in order to kind of limit your frame rates uh, to have a smooth gameplay. In this case, it limits to 160 because my monitor is 160 Hz. So in this scenario, instead of having 119 FPS, we have 160, so we have more FPS, of course. They are uh, kind of guest frames because they are frames created by the frame generation algorithm instead of being created inside the game engine. So, of course, we have a bit more latency and so on, but still, we have way higher smoothness because we went from 119 to 160, and now look at the power draw. We still have 160 FPS and we have 245 watts compared to 296, so basically 250 versus 350 watts difference, more or less. And we have the temperatures much lower, 67 versus 64 degrees. And at the same time, we have lower temperatures and we have lower noise levels, which is a win-win situation. So more FPS, lower noise, lower temperature, and lower power draw, in this case, 50 watts. Now, when using XCSS Ultra Quality, let me just pause it a bit. Um, once again, we're hovering and we're getting much more FPS when we're using ultra quality from XSS 122. Well, I wouldn't say much more, but we are, we're indeed having a bit more, maybe with a bit of a CPU bottleneck since we're using XSS in this game. Um, and we're running around 272 watts, as you can see, 270 and we're hovering 120 at 2400 megahertz. Even the, um, the power draw is around the same, so 269, 277. The temperatures, although, are a bit higher with frame generation once again, and the CPU is working a bit more as well. 80 watts with 65 degrees versus 84 watts with 68 degrees because the CPU temperature, the CPU usage is also higher. From 51, around 50, let's say 50, 55, 
at maximum to 60 so from 5 to 10 percent more used um, and that's why the temperatures are also higher because the power draw and the usage is higher as well but in this scenario we went from 123 to 218 fps and if you have a high refresh rate monitor let's say like 240 hertz then this would be great because you would be jumping from 120 to 220 which is a big jump in terms of smoothness of course but in case you're having a 160 hertz display like I do, for example. In that case, we're talking about a huge difference once again. So from 120 to 160, and we went from 270 watts on the GPU and 62 degrees in this case. I guess it's, it is still warming up, maybe, to 220 watts with 63 degrees. So from 120 to 160, but at the same time, uh, we're having lower power usage. Once again, around 50 watts difference, and 50 watts is a lot. As for the CPU, somehow the CPU it still delivers higher usage, so from 64 to 69 and or 70, and um, yeah, the power draw goes up by like 3-4 watts. Maybe that happens because we're using VSync, and for VSync it uses the, the CPU to kind of lock the frames, I don't really know, but something is happening here. And now we have Ghost of Tsushima, and once again we're testing FSR frame generation off versus FSR frame generation on. In this case, frame generation has VSync enabled. And once again, uh, we went from 313 watts around that to 280 watts watts even if we, if, we, if we count let's say 300 watts to 280 it's still a difference of around 20 watts 20 watts less and we, instead of having 100 we have 160 frames and if we think about it yeah it's at least for me it is definitely worth it using fsr 3.1 much a much smoother gameplay and at the same time i have less power draw once again 260 watts for example in this part versus 309. Uh, the only downside is the cpu once again that somehow needs more power to work properly but the extra power that the cpu takes is way lower than the than the power reduction that we have uh on the gpu so it's a win-win situation and you have more frames when using FSR 3.1 quality mode instead of native, uh, where we go from 120 to 198, 200 FPS, and this is because we have no VSync enabled. So without VSync, uh, it goes the way it wants to go. And as you can see, even in this scenario, even in this scenario where where we're going from 120 to 200 FPS, so once again, if you have a, a 220 or 240 hertz monitor, the difference in smoothness will be insane because you have around double the frame rates well not double but you have a way more frame rates and at the same time look at the temperatures and look at the power draw even in this scenario we have less power draw around from 20 to 30 watts less on the gpu we have lower temperatures and at the same time we have lower noise levels as well because the temperatures uh, and uh, the power draw are lower and in this scenario i mean the cpu only takes around five watts more around that five six watts more and the temperatures are just a bit higher and we have way more fps so way more smoothness and once again the gpu power draw is also quite lower and when we enable vsync it is even better with fsr 3.1 quality we go from 280 watts 285 around that 289 depends let's say around 300 or 290 watts to around 220 or 210 watts so 210 280 something it's from 70 to 80 watts listen to me we have around 80 watts less power draw 70 to 80 watts less power draw uh, while having lower temperatures lower noise levels and having more fps from 128 to 160 and at the same time the power draw on the gpu is much much lower and since the power draw is lower it leads to lower temperatures and lower noise levels as well with the only downside being the cpu working a bit more a bit hotter but i mean it's a win-win situation more fps i mean you know the drill and since you might be thinking, well, this is just for top tier GPUs, and I mean, this applies to top tier GPUs, well, I'm testing now, or at least I tested, the RX 7650 XT. And as we can see, we're using 1440p in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, XCSS Ultra Quality, uh, and with frame generation off versus frame generation on without any kind of vSync or frame limiting, we go from 86 
to 146, which is not double the frames, of course, because frame generation does have its impact in performance, so it's usually around 80 to 90% uh, improved frame rates, not double. Uh, but still, once again, we have the CPU working a bit more, 61 degrees versus 64, which is normal, 60 watts versus 55, but at the same time, we go from 86 from, from 86 FPS to 146, even with the 6750 XT, which is a major increase in smoothness. The performance, well, it's relative performance is relative, but at least in terms of smoothness, it is much better, especially for me. I will definitely, definitely play it with 146 FPS frame generation versus 86 without frame generation. The experience overall is just much more enjoyable. And as you can see, in terms of power draw, it is around the same, 202 watts versus 204 watts, and we have 80% more smoothness, which is actually great. Now we go, I believe, to frame generation with, with RTSS frame limit on. Since this monitor that I have is actually using 165 hertz, uh, at least it's, it's native refresh rate, 165 hertz, we were having 144 FPS before. And since we were having 144 FPS, if I enabled VSync, it will lock the, the frame rates to one, 165, and yeah, it wouldn't do anything basically because we're, we were having FPS below our refresh rate. So what we have to do is go to Riva Tunner statistics server and basically lock the frame rates to 120. And that's what I did. Locking the frame rates to 120, we still go from 85 FPS to 120, which is a much more enjoyable experience, in my opinion, even though we have a bit more input latency. But at the same time, we decrease the power usage from 200 watts to 164, 170, sorry, now. So uh, 200 to 170 from, let's say, 25 to 30 watts less, which might not be much for some people, but at least we're, we're doing it. We're getting lower power draw at higher FPS numbers, and at the same time, the only downside, once again, is in fact the, the slightly higher temperature um, and power draw on the CPU side. But I mean, it's like two watts, two, three watts, <laughs> and the temperatures are like three degrees higher, so it's not meaning, meaningful at all, but in terms of in terms of power draw on the GPU side, the difference can be noticed since it decreases the power draw, the temperatures and the noise levels, which once again, it's a win-win situation. And I'm showing you this, but we could go even further and decrease, for example, from, uh, let's say, 120 to 100. Or, but in this case, we would be getting like 15 FPS and it, it wouldn't make sense. But in this scenario, we're still getting in terms of smoothness. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, at least, for example, 120, you would go in terms of smoothness from 85 hertz to 120 hertz, which makes the difference. And at the same time, uh, you would basically be getting lower power draw and so on. So once again, it's a win-win situation. Slightly increased input latency, but at the same time, much more smoothness. And I myself play the games, these games, with frame generation. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, I, for example, I played with frame generation and VSync that had quite a lot of input latency and I played the game from beginning to end with frame generation and it was perfectly fine. And well, guys, as you saw, it seems that frame generation does consume a bit more CPU power. And now we have my cat here. Ruka. Então. Então. Once again, it seems that frame generation does consume a bit more CPU power and VRAM allocation at least, around 300 megabytes. And the CPU power might be due to how the process pipeline is done with the new FSR 3.1 frame generation that is now decoupled from the upscaling. But once again, I might be wrong. On the other hand, as soon as we lock frames to something inside your monitor's refresh rate, we have a smoother gameplay alongside lower GPU power draw, lower GPU temperatures and lower GPU noise levels. Being the only downside the added input latency, of course, that in most single player games won't really make the difference. And of course there are the possible visual artifacts, but as long as you have at least, let's say, 60 or 70 base FPS, it will be very hard for a mainstream player, for a mainstream user, let's say that, to really notice anything without zooming in or maybe just record a video and kind of doing a slow motion of it. Otherwise, it, it will be really, believe me, really, really hard to notice any visual artifacts.
Overall, I believe that frame generation can be a great addition in certain circumstances, especially to save power. And now that consoles are also getting frame generation, with the first game being Immortals of Avium on the Xbox, yeah, it will start getting even more relevant. And of course, the technology is also evolving every day, with companies looking to deliver the same technology with lower input latency and higher visual fidelity. I myself used frame generation for Horizon Forbidden West, Ratchet and & Clank and played dozens of hours in Ghost of Tsushima with it enabled with VSync as well. And I can definitely state that the experience is far from bad. And once again, what I mean with this is that the experience is not near as bad as some people say, especially in games where you have decoupled frame generation from AMD. And, and yeah, it's definitely the future that technology will keep improving. And people said the same thing about upscaling a few years ago. And it's really, really getting to the point where it's really, really close to native quality in some scenarios, even slightly better. But that's another story. But really, really close to native quality. And now it's my dog. <laughs> and, and yeah, frame generation will get to the same point where it will be really, really close to native quality while having close to no artifacts and performing, well, really close to the native in terms of input latency. That's what we have for technology, but yeah, it keeps evolving every day. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you now know that frame generation should be used with frame lock in order to save power. Unless you really need those extra frames if you have, let's say, uh, 400 hertz monitors, 240 hertz, unless you need those frames or, or you really want those frames, yeah, if you have, let's say, 160 hertz, 144 hertz, 120 hertz, then what you want is to lock your frames a little below what you're having right now. For example, if you're having a maximum of 140 or let's say 160 with frame generation, just lock it maybe to 120. Lock it to 120, you have lower power draw, lower GPU power draw, lower noise, lower temperatures, and at the same time, you'll have higher smoothness compared to what you have uh, with, with base frames. So, I mean, for me, really, it's a win-win situation. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. By the way, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you really think about the technology. And I'll take my glasses off. If you think that, um, that the technology is really usable right now, if it still needs to evolve a lot in order for, for it to be usable, let's say, for most people uh, and if you think it will evolve or not and if people will actually discard it or not really i believe it is the future and it will keep evolving like upscaling did once again thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video guys cheers